Hi, my name is Aaron. I'm with Fleetistics, and today I want to talk about the Go device. Uh, this one here is just a, a shell, but I'm going to uh, show it to you for demonstration. And a lot of people we talk to think, eh, all GPS systems are alike. Well, I'm going to give you the 13 things that make this device, which is produced and manufactured by Geotab, and that we've been uh, selling nationwide for uh, about 18 years now, actually the oldest distributor in the United States, uh, you know, selling the Geotab product. And I'll tell you that this is the best piece of equipment on the market, and I'm going to tell you why. And then when you go to talk to somebody else about you know their GPS system and uh, you know they want to make it sound like yeah you know it's a commodity, think about the things that we're going to go through here and really understand that this is the foundation of everything else that you're going to be doing. You know the st the information that you see online is dependent on what comes out of this, and uh, GeoTab has both end of that equation covered very well. So the first thing I want to point out is. This is a cost-effective unit. It's not like you're going to get this huge list that I'm going to give you and you're going to pay 10 times the price point. That's not the case. This is uh, very competitive and you're getting significantly more in the device itself. Number two is the advanced engineering that goes into this device. It is not a dumb device by any stretch of the imagination. The Go 8 just came out. It has more resources, more processing power, more uh, internal components to support the growth in the engineering that's going to be taking place in the future. So, um, you know, it is unique in that it has an OBD, but this OBD um, adapter here will also work on JBUS protocol as well as elect uh, electric vehicles. So, as a lot of government agencies are moving towards electric vehicles and trying to understand when, uh, where electric vehicles are going to come into play, this one device works with all three platforms. So if you want to take it from a car and put it in a semi, you can do that through a series of adapter harnesses that are available, but all that technology is built straight into this single device. The third thing is that this device will hold about 30,000 records, which if you think about you know how many records are created in a mile of driving you can drive this thing in most situations for over a month and what's happening is that's a you know a first in first out type memory uh, it overwrites the oldest information that's being stored on here but the information is still being transferred to the cloud so you know uh, in the event that the vehicle is out of coverage for a period of time this unit has a ton of memory to hold that information and then transmit it upon re-entry into uh, or reconnection with a uh, server via the cellular network. So, um, you know, it has got a big, big memory. Number four is the accident uh, detection. And this device has an accelerometer in here, and this is really like number four and five combined. There's an accelerometer in here that samples the vehicle's motion 100 times per second. And because of that accelerometer detection and, and reading capability, the system can determine when there's a 2G event, which is an accident, you know, anything above like 1.5 is an accident, but you know, you can set the exception at let's say 2G to make sure it's a solid, a solid accident. Um, that information then allows you to recreate the accident and you can look at the, the different axis of movement and determine whether or not the vehicle is going forward, how fast, did it come to an abrupt stop, uh, did it accelerate again? Did it actually roll to the side, skid sideways? It's pretty amazing uh, when you look at the engineering reports on a couple of these accidents, which, I, which I've seen, and personally had my daughter in an accident when she had one of these, which got us out of an insurance claim, uh, you know, to see what comes out of these. And we've got some great pictures. If you go to the website, fleetistics.com, and look in the menu structure, which I'll put in the video, you'll be able to see some pictures of accident reconstruction information. So take a look at that. Uh, number six is the modular harness. So I talked about the OBD harness, um, the uh, uh, OBD harness which allows you to extend the unit or move it from being directly in the OBD port. The wire harness lets you put it up in the dash so it's less accessible. Uh, it's really important with these devices that they move with the vehicle so attaching them to the chassis of the vehicle on install is key. But that JBUS harness and then also the electronic vehicle harness which um, you know that's kind of a whole new industry. But there are other harnesses that are available for different types of uh, assets such as heavy equipment. Um, you know, it gives you a lot of flexibility with a single device. There are several 
different IOX options, which is number seven. And an IOX is just the ability to extend uh, you know, other components off this system. And if you look here, there's a little blue dot. Uh, and that's a little door and you can actually take this little rubber piece out and you'll notice that there's a port on the side. You can take what we call an IOX uh, connector, which that IOX might have driver identification, it might have a go talk, so if you want to tell the driver what exception they're created or they're creating, you can do that. And you can daisy ch chain a driver ID to a GoTalk device, to you know um, a panic button, to a Garmin ELD if that's necessary, those types of things. So you can customize the hardware configuration at the individual vehicle level using IOX, and that's very unique in the industry. I, I don't, know, don't know of anybody else that gives you that flexibility. So when you have a big fleet and you want a single platform to work from, this is the way to go. Uh, number eight is the HD logging. And uh, you know, this is a bit of a an area that's confusing to a lot of people because you have a log rate, and when you look at the log rate, is how frequently is it you know plotting a point? Uh, and you know, uh, the HD logging that you get on here is really a, a one second plot. Now, how often that information is transferred from the device to the server is the transfer rate. So, you know, it may be plotting every second, but it's not going to upload that information to the server, maybe but once every 30 seconds or once a minute. But that allows you to control the data cost, but still get super high resolution. Uh, there is what's called a smart algorithm in here, which I'm not going to get into in the video, uh, but it's basically predicting where the vehicle should be. And if, it, if the vehicle is where it should be, then you don't need every point in between. You can just draw a straight line from here to there. So, uh, if I know I'm supposed to be 10 feet ahead, but I find you know, the next coordinate I read is off to the right, I know I can't go that way. I got a plot going that direction. So it's very, very interesting. And that's that advanced engineering in here that's uh, super important. Um, then you've got the map refresh rate. So even though the information got pushed to the server, your map has to either refresh or the position of the vehicle has to refresh in order for that change in position to, uh, to be visible. So that's number eight. Number nine is the fact that you can have three different service plans with the same device. So uh, a command can be sent out to the device and we can put this device in essentially called base mode, uh, which is basic GPS tracking, which is great. Uh, still high resolution, still really good information, but you know, if you don't need accelerometer information, you, you don't need engine diagnostics, base mode is a great place to be. The next level up is Pro Mode, and Pro Mode introduces telematics, which is the accelerometer and some other information, as well as engine diagnostics. And the information that you get is essentially, it is the same as plugging a scan tool into the vehicle, except that all that information is being transmitted back to a central database, so you don't have to run around and check every vehicle or try to get to a vehicle. Every code that's given out of that vehicle that is understood is provided and there's a lot of other systems that say oh I got telematics I got diagnostics they give you like five things or ten you know data points if you're an enterprise or uh, you know sophisticated fleet maintenance operator and manager you want to be able to look at the scan codes and see what's coming up that's going to require maintenance as opposed to only responding after there's a particular issue. You know, we know preventive maintenance is less expensive than reactive maintenance. And keeping those vehicles on the road, preventive maintenance is really how you, how you save money and you make more money and you um, actually become more profitable. And then the last service plan is called Pro Plus. So Pro Plus includes base mode information, Pro Mode information, but Pro Plus transmits the information a lot more frequently. So about every 20 seconds, the, uh, the position of the vehicle is showing up on the map. So there's a, about a 20 second lag between where it is on the street and where it shows on the map, um, you know, based on my tests. Uh, the second thing is that you get a lifetime warranty against manufacturing defects, which is pretty awesome. So, you know, a lot of you that have been around from 2G to 3G, you know, that's a big shift in the market. Geotab is saying if you have your entire fleet on Pro Plus, they will warrant that device against that change, which is a huge, huge issue that nobody else is uh, providing out there. And then the last thing is that with Pro Plus, you also get roadside assistance for light duty vehicles. There are certain limits to that, obviously. Uh, you can't 
you know, you can't use roadside assistance for a garbage truck. Uh, there's distance factors, things like that. But for the average round town tow, uh, roadside assistance is included and it certainly negates some of the cost if you have to go a little bit further to, uh, you know, get your vehicle fixed. Okay, number 10. Uh, we talked about those diagnostics and all the codes being provided to you. So I'm kind of rehashing that, I apologize. But you know, every diagnostic code that comes out. Now, I do want to clarify at this point that you know this is designed for commercial fleet vehicles. If you're driving a Volvo SUV, there's no guarantee that we're going to get the you know the engine diagnostic information off that car. Um, you know, if you're driving a Mercedes, that's not a typical vehicle. Now, if you're a Mercedes uh, Sprinter, different story. You know, when a new model year comes out, the manufacturers will often change the codes, and that requires a lot of engineering. And Geotab has invested in an automotive team that will go out and go after the most popular commercial fleet vehicles uh, as soon as that information is made available in a new vehicle. And that's the level of commitment that Geotab has and that is uh, engineered into this particular device. Uh, does it take a while? Sometimes, yeah, it does take a while for those new codes to get found and issues to be identified, but they have a group dedicated to the engineering of that solution. So uh, another piece of the advanced engineering. Uh, this unit, which is number 11, has a buzzer inside, which doesn't sound like a big deal, but I've been doing this a long time. This is about 18 years for me doing this. This little speaker right here is a 96 decibel buzzer, and you know, it's, it's one thing to track your drivers, but really, what are we after? We want to change behavior, right? And if the behavior doesn't change, then we need to know as well so we can take the appropriate action for our business. But, um, you know, this buzzer can be set, and I'll put a screenshot up on the video for you, where you can set things like speeding over a certain limit, seat belt not being worn, uh, you can tie it to different exceptions that you can create either through the standard exceptions uh, that are available or you can create custom exceptions. So that little feature is really quite significant and nobody else is doing the buzzer in there because we want the driver to get immediate feedback that says, hey, something was done. I just did this, that beep probably was associated with that, and oh, by the way, somebody else can see that I've generated this exception. So uh, let me pay better attention to that and modify my driving behavior. Uh, number 12 is that this device comes in multiple carriers. So if you have one particular carrier that's better in your particular area, then we can always try to match the carrier to uh, your particular area. We try to check that in general, but we've got GSM options uh, among the different GSM carriers and then uh, potentially CDMA options as well. So those things are kind of in flux at times, but you know, GSM is a world standard and it's also the standard that's used in other countries. So, you know, if this device needs to go to another country and it's on GSM, then there's ways to make that work. And the last thing is that because this is an OBD, you know, uh, device, you can simply plug it in. We can ship it to you. Uh, you can literally walk out, stick it in the OBD port and walk away. You can put a zip tie around it if you want, or you can get a harness if you want. We usually recommend just go out and stick it in there and put a zip tie on it, see how that works. Uh, start with that, get some data, start getting comfortable with that, and then determine whether or not you need to make the investment in the harnesses to move the device from the OBD port to a location in the dash that is out of, out of sight, out of reach. Sometimes in vehicles, you know, the unit's right in the way and guys are kicking it as they're getting in and out of the vehicle and you really have to go to a harness. But, you know, we don't want to sell you something that you don't need. So start by basically just plugging it in and see how it works for you and then make that decision. You can always come back and say, hey, I need 10 harnesses. I don't need 50 harnesses and we'll provide you just the 10. Um, you know, we inventory a lot of this stuff so it's available very quickly, next day turnaround type thing. And, um, you know, uh, we do that as a convenience for our customers because sometimes you have an, a truck that's only going to be in for a short period of time and you got to get a component out to it and uh, we try to make sure that we can service our customers effectively. So um, if you enjoyed the list of 13 things about the Geotab uh, Go GPS tracker device, please like and share, um, you know, whether it be on YouTube or Facebook and then pass this video link along and, you know, share it with the other people that you know. We appreciate the, the exposure and uh, we'll be back on with some more great features of the Geotab platform.